All right, this practical theory video is on lesson seven, which is time signatures or meters and note values. Practical theory lesson seven, time signatures and note values. Time signatures or meters and note values. So time signatures are placed at the beginning of a piece of music. So time signatures are placed at the beginning of a piece of music. They contain two numbers that show the number of beats or counts in each measure and the kind of note that receives one beat. All right, so they're at the beginning of a piece of music. Two numbers that show the beats or counts and the kind of note that receives the beat. The top number shows the number of beats or counts in each measure. The bottom number shows what kind of note gets one beat. So the top number, beats in the measure, bottom number, what kind of note gets the beat. Again, two numbers, it's at the beginning of the song, all right, in 4-4 four, four time, that's the example they're using, remember two numbers, beginning of the song, means four beats in each measure. And the four on the bottom means a quarter note gets one beat. In 4-4 four, four time, a whole note, that's a whole note, receives four beats, one, two, three, four. So in four, four time, remember, time signature meter, top number tells you how many beats in the measure, bottom number shows what kind of note gets the beat. So in four, four time, four beats in the measure, four, a quarter note gets the beat, the whole note gets one, two, three, four beats. It takes up the whole measure, and it's called the whole note. A half note receives two beats. One, two, three, four. So see the whole note? One, two, three, four. The half note only gets two beats. It is half of the whole note. One, two, three, four. Two beats and two beats. A quarter note receives one beat. One, two, three, four. Four beats in each of these examples in the measure but the quarter note gets just one beat. So there's four quarter notes in the measure, two half notes in a measure, four, four, and one whole note. So for this first one, um, you'll just do this on your own. You won't have to do it for me. I might have some of you do it in class, but. Um, unless I have some way for you to record it, which I haven't set up that at this time. So it is more for you to get used to understanding that the beat, the pulse stays the same, but the rhythm can change based on the notes. So for example, if the tempo were like this, like one, two, three, four, then what would happen, and I don't know if you'll be able to hear me clapping with my mic on here, but it'd be like this. One, two, three, four. 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 So that would be number one. Now for number two, what you have to do is write the beats under the notes. Now don't overthink this. Basically, you're just writing one, two, three, four on each of the lines because the four beats stay the same regardless of the rhythm. So what you would do is the first one, they have the lines the whole time for you. So you write one, two, three, four on the lines. But then for the, um, for the next one, for number two, or the second part of two, you would still write 
the notes, you know, what the beats, one, two, three, four, you'd write it like if there were lines there. You'd keep writing. Same thing for the next one. You'd still write one, two, three, four. You'd write one, two, three, four under each of the measures because the beats are that way. Okay, then you can count number two the way you did um, number one. And then for uh, four, you have to add the bar lines. In the following example. So if there's four beats in the measure and the quarter note gets the beat, you have to figure out one, two, three, four, draw a bar line. Where is the next four beats? And then draw a bar line and so on. And then um, you can write the beats under the measure. So like you did with number two for number four, you'll write the beats. It says count them, but write the beats um, in each measure like you did for number two, and that is lesson seven.